good afternoon and welcome to everyone as chairman of interoid committee of wrc of ici i welcome everyone to this program i have with me uh, chairman wirc priya manish gadia manish bhai thank you for your support i also have with me past chairperson of wirc ca priti saula priti madam welcome and thank you for your support always i also have with me ca nikhil kochar and uh, nikhil is the brain behind this series and this program nikhil really thank you very much for designing the program getting the speakers and really an offbeat topic so already we did a conclave and a refresher course but here there are different topics and which are next gen and that also reflects in the registration nikhil so thank you very much for that i also recognize presence and welcomes uh, mohit gupta mohit is our first faculty today for us and uh, he is going to cover uh, rpa so let us welcome mohit also and uh, i welcome all the participants more than 800 registrations and uh, as we speak the participants are joining in so friends as we start i request everyone to put their hand on their heart and we'll play the ici motto यशस्सुप्तेषु जाग्रति यशस्सुप्तेषु जाग्रति कामं 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 शो पुरुषो निर्मिमाणः निर्मिमाणः तदेव शुक्रं तदेव शुक्रं ब्रह्मा thank you all so uh, as we are seeing and like uh, the programs which wrc is conducting and also the programs which iia is also conducting we are seeing more and more participants and there is lot of interest in internoid and also various new areas of practice in internoid and risk consulting so uh, which is a good sign and we welcome lot of people who are new want to build their career in internoid uh with this now i request uh, nikhil kochar for his opening remark nikhil over to you thank you so much motu sir ca manish gadia ji chairman wirc of icai ca priti sabla past chairman of wirc uh, ca motu sir my friend and mr mohit gupta another friend thank you for this opportunity Uh, before i start anything else i would say that i am also first a chartered accountant i became a cia much much later and definitely this is my institute as much as it is yours so it gives me immense pleasure to be doing this joint program between uh, iia institute of internal auditors where i serve as the chief advisor and the wirc we had a similar program conducted between nirc and iia a couple of months ago and our president of iia mr tyagrajan kumar gave a very interesting observation he said today a chartered accountancy degree is like an mbbs degree and once you have done your mbbs after that you decide to specialize do you want to become an orthopedic surgeon you want to become an ophthalmologist do you want to become similarly for chartered accountants do you want to specialize in taxation do you want to specialize in compliances and company law or do you want to focus on finance do you want to focus on governance risk controls and internal audit 
Uh, I think we do all agree that there is a huge scope because of the cost arbitrage. Uh, you know, many MNCs are setting up huge service delivery centers with 30,000, 40,000 people working on analytics, remote internal auditing, etc. So the amount of demand for this particular area is absolutely huge. And let us also not forget that none of this would be possible unless we were using technology all the time. The pandemic has taught us another lesson that if you want to continue to be an auditor, you cannot escape using technology. I think it is very much upon us that the use of technology for purposes of auditing is absolutely critical, essential, and those of us who want to stay on in this line, who are not able to use technology may actually get left far behind. It may start with something as simple as data analytics, but then after that, people will be moving towards RPA, robotic process automation, which is the subject on which uh, Mohit Gupta is going to be speaking to us. Uh, along with technology also come the risks associated with technology. And that is why we will also have uh, CCA Yukti Aroda, who will be talking to us about IT security risks, cloud security risks, which again is something we need to be absolutely aware about. Just to also explain that those of you who are interested, fortunately, recently, we the IIA globally has come out with a program called the CIA Challenge. And uh, for people from 17 qualified accounting bodies, and I must say that uh, the Institute of Chartered Accountants is one of them, active members can actually sit and clear the challenge exam in one sitting. So those of you who want to conduct your specialization in this particular area, it is a fantastic opportunity, but I don't want to spend too much of time. I told Murtaza I will not take more than two to three minutes. So all I will say is, over to the speakers. I'm sure we're going to have lots and lots of learning. Please do make the most of it. And we happily look forward to conducting many more such programs uh, with regional councils of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of India and with the IIA as a supporting partner. We really look forward to it. Thank you once again and wish you all the very best. Thank you. Thank you, Nikhil. Thanks a lot. At the first instance, when we spoke to Nikhil, saying that let us do a joint program, he immediately agreed to it, and we are really grateful, Nikhil. And I think in WRT, this is the first program we are doing WRT and IIA together. And such good topics, such good speakers, and that shows in the number of registration. And I'm sure people who are internal auditors, and a lot of calls I was getting, there are head of audits also who are attending today and partners of some firm. And of course, everyone agrees that like in the internet universe now, the uh, IT audit area, the security, the cloud security is increasing and those topics are there. Also like uh, when we look at and do the analytics on the whole population, how do we keep the documents, how do we keep the sample of what we check and hence the digitalization and of course the RPA which Mohit is going to speak on. So really something different and I'm sure that all the expert speakers are going to give us a lot of inputs which will be helpful for us on a day-to-day -day basis. I also welcome WRC Secretary C. Arpit Kabra. Arpit, welcome. Uh, now I request WRC Chairman C. Manish Gadia for his opening remarks and about the activities at WRC. Manish, bye, over to you. Thank you, Murtaja Bhai. Uh, C. A. Nikhal Kochar, Chief Advisor of uh, IIA. Mohit Gupta, Faculty. Priti Savla, Past Chairperson, WIRC and Arpit Kabra, Secretary WIRC. It's really a great pleasure for WIRC also for uh, having a joint program first time with IIA. And we want to look forward for such more program in future. Because tech, uh, internal audit is now a good area of practice, good consultancy, I can say. And uh, the program what we have structured today and tomorrow, we are more or less going to talk about technology, which is very important as far as the today's world are concerned. Today we are going to discuss RPA, then uh, IT risk management and cloud security, then cyber security tomorrow, 
and then digitization of internal audit so basically a technology what we are going to discuss in this two day conference and really very well structured by uh, nikhil uh, on this as far as technology is concerned wirc is also taken this initiative uh, under the leadership of our uh, digital and accounting committee uh, which is headed by arpit kabra very well aptly supported by murtuja so we have started a long duration technology course it is a 60 hours course uh, where we are uh, teaching a chartered accountant about uh, dig, uh, data analytics with the help of sql and python a third batch of this course is running now and feedback is really good it is a 60 hour course part 2 of this course also we have launched which is 40 hours where we are going to teach them tableau and uh, power bi and after that we are going to have third part again of 60 hours where we will cover robotics so this is what we are taking care as far as technology is concerned and every apart from this every month that is third th thursday of every month we are organizing one or another program on technology as far as internal audit is concerned we are wirc is doing fantastic work uh, on internal audit in the month of may we have conducted conclave of internal audit which is for 12 hours under the chairmanship of murtuja bhai very good response we have got where more than 600 participants were there then in the month of june and july we have 15 hours refresher course on internal audit there also we have more than uh, roughly 500 participants and today also in this program we have registered 820 participants so really a good uh, thing and we are looking forward for more and more such program with iia so thank you very much murtaja bhai over to you thank you chairman for all the update now let us move to the session straight i request priti savla madam to introduce mohit and then we get started madam over to you thank you murtuza bhai uh, for uh, thank you wirc uh, for giving me this opportunity to introduce uh, uh, first faculty for the day a very respected chairman c manish uh, ghadia uh, secretary c arpit kabra uh, c murtuza kachwala immediate past secretary and uh, who is heading the internal audit committee Uh, uh ca i would say ca uh, nikhil kochar ji uh, because first he has qualified ca and uh, uh, who so qualifies ca first and uh, ca and then other qualification always by heart they remain ca uh, and that is what nikhil ji has also shared uh, very respected faculty ca mohit gupta ji uh, uh, all dear uh, participants hope everyone is safe and healthy uh, friends uh, very importantly uh, this session and jointly with iia first time in the history of wirc and again i would say uh, the way it is happening because now multidisciplinary partnerships are is a way forward so in this scenario you know joining hands with other professionals becomes the most important because this is you know with the technology in the current scenario playing a important role and the way the audits and all and uh, entire profession the way in which it will be done is going to change and this type of programs are actually will be of relevant and importance uh, so uh, my appreciation and uh, compliments to ca murtuza kachwala who has taken the lead uh, for organizing this program uh, aptly supported by chairman ca manish gadia and uh, one most important thing i noticed when i was going through the profile of ca mohit gupta that he is a chartered accountant and engineer and that is a deadly combination i would say because hardly i have seen such a combination of ca and engineer so friends he is a chartered accountant and a, a engineer he is a working as a, a partner in mazars in india and have more than 15 years of post qualification experience of leading large and complex engagement for various internal audits internal control frame, frameworks including socs ifc risk management 
He also leads the Mazar Center of Excellence established in India to deliver various internal audit and internal controls related solutions to various clients across the border. So uh, he was previously worked with the big fours as well as Genpact, where he has supported his clients for delivering various engagements covering wide range of sectors with primary focus on manufacturing, oil and gas and automobile sector. Is a board of governors, governors of Delhi chapter of IIA and president of Lucknow Club of IIA Delhi chapter. He has also a co-author of Technical Guide on Risk-Based Internal Audit Planning, published by ICAI. He is a regular speaker on this internal audit controls and uh, uh, all the topics related to internal audit uh, and new ways of doing internal leveraging technology with uh, various reputed and large professional bodies like IIA, uh, ICSI, ICAI, I uh, CMA, uh, and a lot more. And uh, friends, all of you will agree that we all are very fortunate to have CA, uh, have Shri Mohit Gupta ji as our faculty. So uh, friends, let us welcome uh, Shri Mohit Gupta ji. And uh, uh, I, I am 100% sure this sessions and this entire conference will be very value added sessions. Wish you all the best for learning. Thank you very much. Floor is your floor is yours. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Pithu, ma'am, for such a warm welcome. I will share my screen. First of all, many thanks to all the participants for sparing time on a busy weekday. I can understand how difficult it would be on a on a weekday attending a session like this. Uh, but a pleasant Thursday, I will say. Uh, and uh, in this session, we are going to talk about robotics and how we can use the robotics for the purpose of internal audit. And this seminar is organized jointly by our Western India Regional Council of Institute of Chartered Accountants of India and the Institute of Internal Auditors India. Uh, many thanks to the respected chairman, sir, uh, Shri Manish Gadia ji, Nikhil ji, CA Murtaza bhai, uh, ma'am and uh, all the council members for giving me this opportunity to present and interact with this wonderful audience. See, before I deep dive uh, into, into the slides and start talking about the robotics too much, I think important is we understand the world is changing fast and the digital revolution and any incident, whether or not in the control of the organization, can have big impacts on the organizations. And accordingly, we as internal auditors need to change and modify our approach to align with these new rules of the game. And when I say these new rules of the game, it will have two aspects. One is, first, how do we leverage this technology for the purpose of performing the internal audits more effectively? And secondly, while the different organizations are using this technology and embracing the technology for making their processes more effective, how do we go and do the audit in that environment? Because in that environment, every transaction, whatever the process being done, every recording will be done either through the technology or within the technology itself. Now, in that, how do we how do we justify with the role with which we are embarked as internal auditor and how do we come uh, to the uh, fulfill the expectations that we have from the internal auditor? Now, in the today's session, I will try to take you on the journey of the digital transformation and the expectations that are building up from the new age internal auditor and see how can we do justice for the role uh, and this new expectation that we have from the internal auditors. And accordingly, if we see the agenda for the today, see, I'm going to primarily talk about three major aspects. One is what's the role, how that the expectations are changing and understanding the basics of the robotics. Before, before we deep dive, how do we leverage robotics for the purpose of internal audit? Then we will spend some time on seeing that how we can leverage robotics for making the audits more effective. We're going to see whether we are going to replace the internal auditors by some machine or the robots are going to complement us and make us more effective while we, we perform our duties. And third, we see what are the value adds, how we are going to save and how using the robotics, how do we see the life of our chief audit executives or the internal auditor in the times to come and how this technology is going to change the way we uh, live our life and our daily routine 
while we perform our duties and our professional duties. So I start, I start with the role of the internal audit and if we see So because this is important, primarily we see the role that we have to play as an internal auditor. Five buckets. One is the policies and the procedures. When I say the policies and the procedures, there are two aspects to it. One is we go as an internal auditor, see what are the procedures and the policies designed by the organizations, whether those are sufficient and effective to meet the overall organization goals and objectives. And second, while we do our transaction testing, see how those policies and the procedures are effectively complied with. So operating effectiveness of those policies and the procedures. Now we are going to see whether we as an internal auditor using the technology uh, and the bot for that matter uh, can make us more effective while we fulfill this objective. Secondly, we being the independent and the unbiased view on uh, while we provide our reports and our views on the processes and the effectiveness of the transactions that are being undertaken. So we have to still remain an independent. Uh, and again, while we choose the bot, whether the bot will again be independent, uh, whether there could be an IT risk where somebody can play with the bot. And again, the objective that we are trying to achieve by performing the audit using the bot, whether that can be adversely affected, we are going to see that. Third, the compliance with the laws and the regulations, the organizations would have the best of the framework and their mechanism to ensure the compliance with the laws and regulations. Secondly, while the process is being undertaken, there would be the steps defined so that the automatically the compliance is being done. Now, when we go as an internal auditor using the technology, is there a room that we can be more effective and give better assurance and comfort to the top management uh, while, while they expect us to give our view whether the organization is complying or not. Third, uh, again moving, environment by assessing the efficiency and operating effectiveness of the process and the controls again the two parts to it the efficiency and the operating effectiveness i would just want to say one thing that while we embrace this the, we are going to talk about the effectiveness of the controls is there a possibility that we as a human being can spare our effective time to improve the design part of the controls and leave the repetitive mundane task for the technology to handle I'm sure we can do it and that's how we can blend it together and see that how can technology make us more effective uh, in the role that we are going to deliver. And the last being as an internal auditor, we can't do justice with everything. We can't go and audit each and every transaction. So somewhere we have to do a audit planning somewhere. We have to live with risk based audit planning. And while we do that, we have to prioritize what we do now, what we do repeatedly, what we do the next year in the times to come in discussions with the management and the stakeholders. Now, important is while we do that and we want to spare time on what matters the most for the organization, still can we do the coverage of the other area, at least give some reasonable amount of assurance to the management that the transaction at least are undertaken the way these are envisaged. So can we leave this technology to do that so that while we are prioritizing, we as a human being can focus and use our brains for more effective and strategy related tasks and leave the other aspects and the other activities for, for them for the machines to do. Having said that, I would want to first show you one video and see how this changes, how the technology is changing our life. Once upon a time, business as usual was often good enough. No more. Where we are going, good enough is dead. In a world where one. everything is connected, where if Let me play it again, sir. Thanks for... Please, we could see you, but we couldn't see the screen. Uh, actually, I could see. Once upon a time, business as usual was often good enough. 
no more. Where we are going, good enough is dead. Another screen will open up. Please look into that screen. In a world where everything is connected, where everything is equally excellent, where performance is reaching perfection, there's only one space left to innovate in. You. Right now, you are a central point in the raging tornado of change fueled by digitization, mobilization, augmentation, disintermediation, automation. Well, the list goes on. Science fiction is becoming science fact. Think about self-driving cars or computers that can learn and think. The way we work will never be the same. The skills we need will be dramatically different. Winning or losing are now happening faster than ever before. So what's your response? How will you discover new opportunities in one of the most transformational times in human history? Are you driving change or are you being driven by it? Disruption has become the new normal. With change, it's always gradually, then suddenly, well, things really have stopped happening gradually. This change is exponential. Everything that used to be dumb and disconnected is now wired and intelligent. Cars, cities, ports, farms, even our bodies will be wired with sensors and will talk to each other. These game changers are also combinatorial. They amplify each other, creating a perfect storm of change. Quantum computing fuels big data. The Internet of Things fuels artificial intelligence and deep learning, which fuels robotics. However, anything that cannot be digitized or automated will become extremely valuable. Human-only traits such as creativity, imagination, intuition, emotion and ethics will be even more important in the future because machines are very good at simulating but not at being. Yes, robots and software will do some of our work, but this will allow us to focus on things that cannot be automated. To imagine change squared, you've got to start engaging more with what might be, not just with what is. Immerse yourself in the immediate future, five to seven years out from today. We need to go beyond technology and data to reach human insights and wisdom. Technology represents the how of change, but humans represent the why. The future is about holistic business model. The opportunity is to be liquid, to learn just in time, not just in case, not single improvements, but complete transformations, not individual systems, but new ecosystems. Humanity is where true and lasting value is created. We will engage late and buy things because of the experiences they provide, because of their transformative power. The future doesn't just happen, the future gets happened. The new way to work is to embrace technology, but not to become it. The future is in technology, yet the bigger future lies in transcending it. Let's live and lead from here. So I think it's a wonderful video that's talking about how technology is changing uh, our lives. Important is the two key messages, the two key messages from the video. One is, are we driving the change or we are driven by the change? And second, we need to focus on the human only trades. See, at times we are confused that what if the technology will replace us? So I think important is we leave the task which machines can do and we start focusing on the task which as a human being we can we can we can further improve now as we go ahead and see how what the technology and how the technology is changing the environment around us now how the expectations from the internal auditor is changing first being the operations now in the organization if we see 
technology has become the way of doing the business rather than just being a support function. So gone are the days when the technology, there was an IT department, the IT function, they used to go and just support uh, with the, some machine which are used for some communication, the recording. But today the technology has become a way of doing the business itself. Look at the Amazons of the world. Look at there are so many organizations which has come in who are providing technology as the service. Talk about the BPO companies and the IT companies, the way of doing the business, the telecom companies without technology, they can't think of even doing a business. They can't survive even. So that's, that's what's happening with more and more and large number of organizations. Secondly, as it is happening, the higher proportion of the white collar jobs and the, uh, and the, the smart workforce is increasing and, and the blue collar requirements are reducing. Now what happens because of this, the complete organization is surrounded by more and more smarter people. And hence, uh, we are more prone the people who are able to manipulate the transaction, they are also more smarter. So we as an internal auditor, when we go, we need to see whether the processes are effective, how we can also use the technology and be smarter, become more and more smarter to again do the audit in that kind of environment. Third being the remote working. Now remote working, while for the organizations also it's happening, as an audit committee also we can leverage technology for the purpose of remote audit. Uh, see, we can always go and on the ground and the government has now also allowed us key, okay, there is lockdown for the certain period, but then now the travel is allowed. But more and more organizations are moving, making this remote working as a new norm. They are able to save a lot many costs and hence we will also have to have a match of wavelength with them and be able to do remote working to, to, to remain in the game. And fourth is, Increasing and the changing compliance requirements as the technology is happening new and new laws are happening old laws are getting revamped uh, So we need to see how do we embrace those compliance changes keep ourselves up to date uh, And use technology for giving better and better compliance assurance to the organizations also While that is happening is there anything that is changing in the objectives of the organization that we want to achieve because in the end, as internal auditor, our role would be to help and support the organization in meeting and objective of the organization. Now, first being there are there certain things which I see is changing. Uh, uh, the organizations are moving away, just focusing on the top lines and the bottom lines. There are larger objectives which the many organizations are eyeing today. Uh, the customer centric organizations. Today, the organizations know the larger they are spread, the greater the market shares they have they are going to be relevant in the times to come otherwise they will be very soon out of the market look at look at the organization who are fetching the maximum valuation zomato for an example the recent ipo that had come in the larger the customer base those organizations are fetching maximum valuations why it is happening because in that they are able to see they are able to see the future of the organization so the customer centricity is there Managing the deficit definitely has to be there. You can't learn for the uh, 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 continue working with the operating deficits for the long time. Along with that, we have to manage corruptions. This corruption as a word we have generally associated with the government departments and the PSUs. But believe me, uh, in the private sector also and the large, large organizations, again, this is a subject because a lot more responsibilities and the authorities have been delegated. The people are working from the various locations and the world and hence this is a subject which is also relevant in the other sectors and that also have to be seen while we review the processes how that is addressed how do we match with the fast growth of the organization by the time we do the audit and submit our report uh, the business environment has changed the new decisions have come new product would have got launched uh, are we giving the keeping the pace with them are we able to turn around with our reports faster enough so that it brings value for the organization increasing social responsibilities uh, uh, environment, health and safety. There are new ESG norms which are also coming up. The organizations have become more and more sensitive towards their responsibility towards the society and environment as a whole. So that's also an area which is very important and largely is the volatility in the stakeholders confidence. Believe me and that gets reflected in the share prices. The moment some bad news or some expectations comes up there, you will see the share prices going up and down highly volatility. Uh, so, 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 so you can see that stakeholders confidence is highly volatile and gets shaped by small of the news and it's very important the overall value of the organization is preserved uh, while we as an internal auditor do that and give the assurance to the boards. Having said that, 
while this is happening uh, how how it impacts us as an internal auditor if we see just one second so so if we see our bouquet of the risk the complete portfolio of the risk is changing because of that now today the froster have more and more access to the data now if we have to identify what are the improvement what's going wrong uh, we have to again churn this data only so the risk is moving from the physical boundaries to 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 the data uh, the employees in the social media that's again so anybody can go and speak and today similarly uh, those 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 news those posts can quickly go viral how we are going to prevent the risk from such actions higher interconnected dependencies and the lower controls because of the bring uh, byod is the bring your own device so today uh, because of this remote working the all the employees are given uh, the in charge of the, they bring their laptops they connect with them and they start working access the informations uh, for the organizations there are new risks that gets unearthed because of that in the sex session yukti i'm sure going to talk more about this but that's very important how do we embrace technology as we use for the purpose of making our work effective there are new risks that gets unearthed and we have to we have to cover those risks as a part of our review as well compromising segregation of duties and the financial stability that's very important because today the lesser workforce are working on the ground there would be instances of compromising the segregation of duties how do we how do we ensure and give comfort to the management that okay those have not been misused and and manipulated for doing any transaction now this gives us a very good sense that is it something that we are going to do something very differently as internal auditor what we were doing for the past 10 years is it something different that has been expected from us i will say that is there then nothing nothing is getting removed from that expectation but i will say that our role is changing fast but the expectation is significantly enhanced we are expected to support the organization in their governance mechanism we are expected to support the organization in strategy building uh, and hence we have to find the smarter ways where we can leverage technology to do the repetitive task the mundane task so that we are able to spare time to meet this end objective of the organizations and the top management that they want us to do now having understood what's changing from the expectation uh, in this slide i just want to quickly take you on a journey of the digital transformation that is happening and that has happened in the past now along with that we as an auditor what do we need to change in our tools technology techniques of doing the audit to keep a pace with that as you see on the top of it we there are technologies that are diminishing there are technologies which are maturing and there are technologies which are emerging and today the organizations are using it for make for the purpose of doing the business uh, remember the days when the calculators were there uh, any calculation were required to be done only the calculator was there in the uh, with, with the people then the spreadsheet got introduced with this spreadsheet the people started using data analytics and the macros for identifying and taking more insights from the information the systems got introduced the stand alone enterprises were there then the client server networking is there the head office got connected to the various branches they started communicating faster and hence the remote connectivity took the lead and the internet got introduced now this technology as they got introduced the business started adopting it to make their processes more effective to use them for the purpose of making the business more effectively the erp is best of the erp is got introduced the tally were there the normal accounting were being done using the ledgers hard copy ledgers gradually that, that got moved to the erps the cloud computing became the norm now today we see there are so many technologies like the robotic process automation we are going which we are going to talk more in detail the machine learning the big data analytics the blockchain for the more secured information the artificial intelligence the nlp now these are the kind of technologies which are already on the table the organizations have started using that for the purpose of doing the business and generating better rois the, the top lines you would see for the organizations moves at a much much faster rates now while these technologies are getting introduced we see that the way the business were doing the communications have also changed a lot it has moved from the letters the hard copies and the desktop based communication to the emails now 
hardly we would find the people writing the letters or using the hard copies for exchanging the communications or the information or the messages that they want to share today the emails are there the internets are there the auto video visual communications using the mobile phones are there it has further got more where these erps have got connected to the handheld devices today the machine has become smarter where the ocrs and the natural language processing is being used to read from the documents and then make a judgment and then do the communication so the communication has moved at a very fast pace with the speed of internet now if the business has changed that a lot the way we communicate has changed we can't live with the same techniques of doing the audit that were there i will say the couple of decades back now look at on the left hand side i have shown some of the techniques like the inspection physical verification inquiry the observation those are the basic audit techniques those will still be there we have started using the analytical procedures we have started using the cat techniques the system walkthroughs and the configurations i think these are also the techniques which are maturing still very relevant while we do the complete job but there are newer technologies which we have to start utilizing the technology like how do we use the artificial intelligence the remote audit the robotics for the purpose of doing the internal audit more effectively and believe me if we don't change today uh, uh, we are going to be redundant and that's where the business will start finding uh, what's the value in uh, in the in the internal audit and if we have to keep providing that value again going back to the same thing uh, we have to focus on the human only traits and embrace technology for the purpose of the repeat and the mundane task there's so much of that that we do as a part of internal audit also in all the process reviews that we do and in subsequent slides i will also talk about some of the example and we are not just going to see the slides i am going to show you the live boards also and see how the boards are able to perform perform the audits but before i before i go to that i quickly want to show you uh, this aspect how the audit is being done there are certain certain categories if i classify what to audit where to audit how to do the audit and who will do the audit that's also changing a lot because when we have to embrace the board we'll have to focus on two important aspect as we talked in the earlier slides one how we are going to use the board for the purpose of doing the internal audit more effectively but we can't ignore a fact that this bots when the organizations are also implementing in their business processes how we as an internal audit go and audit this bots and i want to give you a very classic example in fact i have seen that uh, for one of the organization they had implemented the bot for the invoice processing now typically you would have seen for the invoice processing there is a three way match required uh, and the human being is there the finance department is given the control wherein before making the payment they will look at the contract and the purchase order they will look at the confirmation in the form of a grn for the receipt of the goods or the services as a confirmation from the user department and they say okay we had given a contract we had received the goods and services what are the rates whether the quality was appropriate or not and verify that takes an approval and process the payment now, this is the manual process that's that's being performed uh in most of the organization we as an auditor we as the statutory auditor or even the internal auditor we go and see whether this is working effectively to take a comfort on the appropriate accounting the accounts payable and the payments part of it now very important use case most of the organization the first use case of the bot is implementing the bot in the accounts payable function and you would see this gradually the, the bots have started scanning the documents reading the information processing the invoice look at the delegation of authorities and based on certain rules makes and checks compare it with the system based purchase order and the grns and process the payment now in that environment when somebody is not physically doing it and you see that in the back end machine is doing it how we as an internal auditor go and do the audit in that kind of a scenario and that's where i say that auditing in the software development life cycle is important gone are the days when the audit is more of a post mortem technique that's also important it's a periodic activity we go and see based on the past transactions what went wrong but very important if we have to embrace and identify the risk well in time so that something major major impact is not there in the organization we have to audit 
along with the software development life cycle and see the business blueprinting the design the new process that's being designed by the organization is is mitigating all the envisaged risk and i'll give you an example at one of the case we saw that we bought in some scenarios and a particular threshold for certain kind of vendors was processing the invoice twice can you imagine if the bot is having that kind of an error and we go as an auditor and audit that kind of a process and there's an inherent risk that we do not we are not able to catch those kind of a transactions in our sample what is the kind of an assurance we are giving to the management what is the kind of the risk that is exposed to the management and the organization and to us as an internal auditor community as the audit community itself uh, uh, so that's where it's important that okay we use the bots for the purpose of audit as well and as well as be able to audit while the organizations are embracing these kind of technologies now having understood the importance of the bots uh, 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 i want to now get into explaining more about what is actually the bot we have used the jargon the robotic many times but because that i would want to set some objectives what we can achieve by using the robotics for the purpose of automation though the word is mentioned in the process but i will say any automation it could be audit automation it could be the process automation how we can use the bot now bot is the digital workforce when we say the robot the steel bodies we would have seen in lot many movies uh we are not talking about that kind of a bot we are talking about a software program that runs on a machine but we is able to mimic the human activities and the task as we do using the laptops and the computers the bot is able to perform those tasks based on certain predefined rules and the logics and there is a way to how how do we how do we code that and how how does the bots are getting created but important is while that is done the bots is able to create a separate digital work for us workforce for us now if we want to quickly augment the number of the audit team members i think we can use bots as a combination and delegate lot of tasks to this digital workforce to perform the audit is the is the is the reach of the bots limited no i will say as if you look at from the audit perspective bot can help us and as all three lines model and i'm going to specifically talk about how can bot help us in strengthening the first line the second line and the third line uh bot is going to help us increasing our focus we spoke about that if we delegate the mundane repeat task to the bots we as a human being be able to focus our energy on the more important more strategic task it helps us with the scalability it helps us with the quality control because unlike human being once the machine is configured it will keep performing with the same kind of a precision in all the transaction as we envisage them to do so 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 whatever the repeated task we delegate to the machines we can expect a high level of a quality and the control uh, in those transactions and hence eventually the bot helps us optimizing the overall cost of control or the overall cost of audit because unlike the human being bot do not have a limitation bot doesn't need a sleep it can work 24 by 7 and 365 days in a year and we can make better optimization and better utilization of these machines to perform round the clock audit and how this round the clock audit is also going to help us in in building some proactive controls mitigating certain frauds and identifying them while it is happening we are going to see such scenarios in the in in some subsequent slides because that's very important uh again uh before before we go next i would want you to enjoy this video because this will tell you the capability of the bot what bot can do and uh, how we can then use it for the purpose of audit we are going to see In a world moving at the speed of digital, new technologies such as artificial intelligence and robotics are fast reshaping businesses and the way we work. Robotic process automation or RPA is one such development that is helping companies work faster and more efficiently. 
RPA enables you to create software robots to automate your business processes and reduce manual workloads. You simply set up the bots to replicate the steps a human will take to get the job done. Then, just let the bots do the work. With RPA, the workday does not need to end. Bots work 24-7, never have to take leave, and apart from occasional maintenance, will never fall sick. Manual tasks are handled many times faster compared to human processing, enabling a greater volume of work to be done. What's more, the bots do not make mistakes, eliminating the possibility of human errors that cost time and money to correct. Let's take a closer look at how RPA can be deployed. Meet Scott. Scott works in a shipping and logistics firm that has decided to deploy an RPA solution to handle the task of generating shipping documents and invoices. First, Scott configures the RPA bot to replicate the exact same steps that he would take to generate a shipping document and invoice. From opening emails, logging into various applications, completing data entry, to printing the shipping document and creating an invoice. Scott spends five days to configure the bot and another two days to test and incorporate additional steps that he wants included. Once set up, Scott now has a bot that automatically replicates the entire process that he used to do manually, which remains compliant to internal and external guidelines. With RPA, Scott has managed to cut down the time needed to complete a task from 30 minutes to just 7 minutes. The tasks are now completed flawlessly and Scott estimates he can achieve fast ROI with payback in five months through reduction in OPEX. Okay, now I think we have seen that video. I think it talks about how the bot is able to actually take the load of a human being, how it is able to perform the task which a human being was doing. Now, if we if we take the learnings from that, and if we want to understand what bot can do, uh, what are the at a micro level, what are the different activities that a bot does, and then we we'll be able to better appreciate how we can take help of these capabilities for the purpose of doing the audit. A bot can read document. When we say read documents, it may be the PDF file, Word file, the Excel document, the source document, anywhere from uh, anything which is there in the digital form, bot can read that. And there are bots, I'm going to talk about the type of bots also. There are bots who has the OCR capabilities built in. You can read from the, from the scanned images and extract the meaningful information even from the scanned images. So bot can do that. Bot can directly connect with the best of the ERPs, the databases. It can extract the data. It can manage the document storage and the trails because for the audit, it's very important. How do we manage our audit work papers? What is the audit trail we are managing? Uh, the documentation bot can do for us. Uh, it can perform the analysis like a data analytics. Uh, it can do the testing based on the logic that we built. It can perform the reconciliations comparing the one set with the other. Uh, based on the rules that we define in the coding, it can follow the if then rules. It has an, a smart and the intelligence can be given to the bot key in different scenarios. How does it react? It can connect with the various APIs in the external portals. I think that's that's the very important aspect and that gives the power to the bot. We say the bot is a platform agnostic. It is not dependent on a particular platform. Anything, any application, any website, any software, that we can run on a computer, bot can talk to that and fetch the information. I'll show you an example by, by, by you know, wherein the bot is able to go to the websites, fetch the information, pull it in the form of an analytics table, perform the analytics, and then give us the report. And I'll take an example, the, the, the audits like the social media audits, what's, what the people are talking about the organizations on the, on the public forum. Now, those are the kind of things we can't even think of doing without the help of the bots. So that's the power of the bot. While we do that, does the story ends there? Because at the end of the day, internal auditor have to give the report. What is our finding? What is the action plan? What's going to happen next? So bot is very much the capable of drafting the reports and then sending it to the various stakeholders for the purpose of their reference. 
and in between depending on the maturity of the people with some training uh, uh bot is able to read the messages from the emails also take the management comments and then finalize it also along with the action plans and then we can we can, the story goes on and on we can use the bots for the purpose of atr the follow-ups and all those kind of information so with all this bot becomes very powerful but before we deep dive and see how we are using the bots in audit uh quickly want to give you a glimpse of the various types of bots uh there are two types of bots basically the attended and attended bots attended are one where in like a software uh, once the bot is configured you have to trigger it they use the user's credentials and then a human being is required to interact with them but most of the time uh, organizations are preferring unattended bot which have a like a timer functionality they can trigger on their own uh, can run them on the cloud so it can work 24 by 7 and it doesn't need an attendant to, to, to run the bot. So these are largely the two categories. Uh, if we look at the major bot providers, the three are prominent, the UI path, the automation anywhere, and, and, and Blue Prism. Uh, and all of them have all the functionalities that we're talking about. Uh, if we further see the automation anywhere uh, has further bifurcated and uh, given the capability uh, of the bots into three. One uh, is the meta bots, the task bots, and the IQ bots. The largely the difference is that the task bots are used to automate uh, the, the repetitive task, but the IQ bot has an element of the machine learning. The AI is also built into it. So if we have to do the better and the larger complicated activities wherein the, there's a decision making also we want to give to the bot, uh, then the IQ bots can be used. And uh, we'll see some examples and the demos for, for this as well. Now, I think in the interest of time, I'll quickly get into how the bots can be used for the audit and the compliance. See, there are various challenges which the organizations face uh, from the audit. And I will not say the challenges. Uh, I think the way the environment and the, and the uh, 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 because of the COVID or the external environment, which is ever changing, there are new and new challenges that will be thrown to us. And we have to see how do we manage that. One being the data management. There's a lot of data. The data is increasing at a at a faster speed. Do we continue doing our repetitive audit based on the same sample? At the end of the day, if we are doing an audit and if my team member has to do it, he will go and perform the audit on sample sample. And if we increase that, there will be a lot of time that will be consumed. And how do we manage that? How do we fetch, store, manage, do the documentation, and come out with the output? The complete set. There's a, there are challenges if we do not utilize some high-end technologies. ERPs, not every team member is equipped to, to use any kind of ERPs. The various organizations use it, different, different applications, different uh, ERPs, how do we talk to them? The audit team may not be continuing, they move on, and we as a community, we face challenges, okay, the X person has done the audit last time, uh, who's going to do it? Are we going to re-engineer and understand again and again? What is the coverage? We have a limitation, we go and audit the limited period. But if we can use machine, the larger coverage can be there. Periodicity, we talk about the post-mortem. We come at a certain frequency, certain audits being done once in a year on a quarterly basis. Can we further increase that periodicity using the technology? How do we do the reporting? The different people write the reports in different fashion uh, and the management at times is confused. Uh, where is the consistency? Where is my key takeaways? It's very difficult for me to read the 100 pages. Uh, so there's a consistency that we can bring in in the reporting as well on demand visibility people may not be available but we can have unattended bots 24 by 7 whenever we want them to uh, once the logic is configured to perform the audit for us they can do it and eventually overall the audit cost can significantly be reduced because they can repeat it uh, they can multiply it and i'm also going to show you how the same bot can be configured to perform the various tasks uh, and if an appropriate Chinese wall is built in, it can perform both at a first line, second line, as well as third line of a defense. Now, this is what I was talking about. Uh, as per the new IA, we don't call it three lines of defense. It's more of a three line model, where in the internal auditor, uh, we, we collaborate with the management and perform an advisory role also, not just do the post-mortem at the end and come at some frequency and just do a fault funding exercise. So, so that's the change. And to embrace that, I don't think a better agent than the RP or the board. 
at the first line bot can help us do the self assessments or strengthen the control while the transaction is being performed at the second line it can help us monitor the compliances give the dashboards do some random checks and help the hods and the management to strengthen the second line and in the third line it can help us as an audit community as the extended hands of the audit uh, and throw out the exceptions and give an assurance okay if the things are moving right or wrong and uh, uh, where where the human being as an auditor we can then focus on more strategic more governance related aspects how those can be built and enhanced for the overall organization now if we want to now see at a ground level when we have to do the audit huh, there are six stages primarily we prepare we plan and then we execute in the execution we gather the information we perform the analytics and then do the field work execution and ends with the reporting now do we see whether this complete six steps all this complete audit life cycle can be replaced by the bot probably not at this stage because the first two i see there is a there's an a uh, high level involvement of our intelligence as a human being our experience is required so i see uh, those two being performed by the internal auditor and that's where i think we have to start spending more and more time but definitely at the later four stages uh, and that most of the scenarios uh, broadly in the range of 70 to 80 percent of the task can be automated using the bots where the bot can gather the information do the audit checks and come out with the reports at a much faster frequencies now this is the slide which will give you a very good glimpse of in the complete audit life cycle how much can be automated using the bot the percentages that we see on this slide is the broad assessment of the time spent in that particular activity in the complete audit life cycle and the colors that are there that shows us uh, what is the potential of automation of that particular activity so when we start the audit we looked at what's happened in the past what's the current year requirement the plan uh, all that has to be done by the human being and that's there the possibility of the automation we have kept low the significant time we as an auditor spent there when we go next there's a data extraction activity the cleansing high level of automation is possible there the bots can perform it bots can take the sample selection communicate with the process owners then bot can also do the transaction testing the exception reporting again the utilization of bot could be higher then go to the management response and the queries i will say the utilization of the bot or the possibility of the automation would be medium there because it's not just a clerical activity it's an exchange of information the better communication how do we interact with them and how we make the management aware of why a particular change is required in the process so the level of experience and the interaction is required so some bit of it can be automated but then again if that information is captured high level of automation is possible while we draft the reports and come out with the dashboards and the reporting for the audit committees and then the final report is issued and the presentation being done to the top management what are the various audit function the audit activities where the automation is possible internal audit we can do it continuous controls monitoring that's a very important use case for the bots because it's very difficult uh, as an internal auditor we would have seen the concurrent audits uh, the continuous control mo monitoring being done by the human beings uh, those are more of the nature of the repeated task being done uh, there's a high level of and a good potential wherein if that logics are clear repeatedly it has to be performed why not delegate it to the machines yes bot has a potential in the compliance and taxation activities as well we have spoken about the socks and the ifc activities i'm also going to quickly show you a dashboard how much automation is possible in the socks and the ifc compliance activities we talk about the expense and the reimbursement more of the uh, 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 payroll and the such kind of audits where the money is involved bot can be deployed to continuously do a second line of a defense uh, check that while the finance is processing it uh, forensic audits can be done and a lot of things can be done in the cyber security audits also where bot can go continuously check the access logs and various other things uh, uh in enhancing the cyber security audits and come out with the exception now that's more on the type of audit this is more on on the potential of uh, various app processes that we do as a part of internal audit how much of it can be done using the bots 
take an example of the hr procurement branding and social media very important area that i was speaking about today it's very difficult if i have to take an example do a reputation audit do a social media audit how much of the web scrapping a human being will be able to do uh, and i'm sure it will be very difficult for the teams to do it but if we configure it a uh, unattended bot can do it 24 by 7 and the moment we see someone posting adverse comment some negative information about an organization we can immediately fetch it and we'll give enough a, a very proactive opportunity for the organization to handle it rather than a damage uh, later on when the damages happen inventory management the expense review finance and accounts review order to cash uh, and some of the use cases that we mentioned uh, uh, there's a high potential that in each of these areas lot many audit checks can be done using the bot I'm also going to deep dive in some one of the areas and see when we do the complete audit checklist planning, how do we identify what can be done using the bot uh, so that that can be built and how it complements with the audit process just in a while. But before that, let us look at this complete robotic audit delivery model. Where does it actually sit? How does it actually work? So on this start, we see there's a data source. Now the data will be there with the process owners, the workstations, the servers is there. If we have the robotic center of XLS, it could be the client side, it could be the, the audit community side. The bot will interact with the data source, fetch the data, and then you would have already pre-built the control testing library into the bot. That, okay, with that information, what test needs to be performed? So bot continue performing that, prepare a report, find out the exceptions, share with the audit team, wherein if they require to do a second level of a check, to recollaborate the information, or if there is a red flag, some proactive action has to be taken. We do it and then share with the draft reports with the stakeholders for their responses and then prepare the final report and the presentation. That's the typical model how a bot can be implemented. And uh, before we deep dive exactly into one of the example of an audit checklist, uh, I would want to see you one bot live in action uh, doing an audit for us. Uh, using all the nine capabilities that we have seen, how this bot performs the audit. I'll give you a first background about it. So this is a bot who does the logistic cost analysis. There are the logistic bills submitted by the vendor based on the number of kilometers run by them. So the bot is able to fetch that information, go on the Google map, is able to identify the distance traveled, go on the IOCL website, is able to fetch the fuel cost on a particular date and then accordingly identify what should be the ideal cost and if there is a huge variance in the bill submitted it identifies that as an exception and circulate the exception in the form of an audit report to the stakeholders so i'm just going to show you a bot there Variance analysis bot initiated by the user. Bot logs into ERP system using predefined login credentials to extract and save the cost report in specified folder location. Bot sanitizes the data by eliminating spaces, hyphen, colon, etc. under column name vehicle number. Bot opens the CN report and initiates reading for specific data fields. Bot opens cost report and initiates reading for calculating the following variances. 1. Trip variance. 2. Cost variance. 3. Profitability variance. Bot prepares trip, cost, and profitability variance sheet by creating additional columns.
bot extracts daily fuel price data from IOCL official website into an Excel file. Bot extracts the distance between two locations from Google Maps into the Trip Variance Excel sheet. Bot adds 20% to the Google Map distance as the tolerance limit and calculates the difference between the Google Maps distance and distance as per report. Bot tags cases with negative percentage under column name status as a red flag and positive percentage as a pass. Bot calculate the fuel cost based on the following parameters. 1. Actual kilometer run. 2. Vehicle size. 3. Vehicle average. 4. Average fuel consumption. 5. Fuel price from IOCL. Bot calculates percentage of excess fuel cost incurred under column name, difference percentage. Bot tags cases with negative percentage under column name status as a red flag and positive percentage as a pass. Analysis complete. Bot opens and update variance analysis report. Variance analysis report updated. Bot opens Outlook to send the exception cases Excel and variance analysis report to the concerned team members. Mail sent successfully. So we saw a live bot, uh, how a bot could fetch the information from various sources, perform the testing, and then eventually publish the report and circulate it to all the stakeholders. Now I'm going to quickly talk about, we were discussing, uh, how actually we plan and while we identify an audit area, how do we identify what can be done by bot, wherein we can leverage bot, and, and what's the roadmap? I've taken an example of two, two classical as the order to cash and the inventory management. If you see 
uh, when we do the audit planning, we prepare the audit program and identify what are the various risks a particular process is exposed to. And then to mitigate that risk and perform the audit test, what do we do as an, as an audit test processors? Now, those audit test processors are divided into two. One is on the top, we see the data analytics, what could be done using the data analytics. And then once the DA is done, where the manual human being physical in-person audit is required to complete the audit check. Now, if we see in the middle column, wherever the data analytics mentioned, uh, it goes without saying that completely can be done by the bot as well. So at times there's a question also, what's the difference between the bot and the data analytics? Are we talking about the same subject with two different jargons? So I think this will try to answer that as well. Uh, so we have the risk, we whatever the data analytics we have to do, it performs that. But there are many other manual activities also there, which if the data and the bot is configured properly, could be performed using the bot. So the green ones you see, those are the checks, which is a high potential where the manual activities could then be replaced by using the bot. Yes, there would still be certain activities. So take an example, if in person, uh, you have to go do the physical count of the activities, physically see how it's happening, uh, that cannot be done by the bot. But collectively, if I see as a technology, there are larger technologies and the different technologies as well, which can be used to even further automate those kind of activities as well. So that's how that's how we can go about planning this and then use the bot in configuring the various audit checks for the purpose of audit. Uh, when we question the potential of the bot, uh, uh, is it going to replace the human being, the internal auditor? Is it going to make us redundant? Everything going to be done by the machine? Or secondly, what is the potential of the bot? How much audit testing, how much control testing can be done by the bot? So this is an exercise we did it for one of the organization, specifically studying the complete internal control framework at all the processes, bifurcating into the key controls and the non-key controls, uh, how much automation is possible uh, by reading each and every control, uh, whether it could be fully automated, it could be partially automated, and the results were, if you see the last column, total controls, the bottom, you see 30% could be fully automated using the bot and 38% could be partially automated as a high potential of an automation. So collectively, 68% we could arrive. So broadly, we can say 65, 70% of the, of the testing, which has the potential of being automated using the bot. Yes, we acknowledge uh, there are certain things which uh, bot may not be able to automate at least in the current scenarios, but definitely in the times to come, this potential will further go up. And if you look at from the activity level, uh, the same process is how much data download activity they can do, uh, how much bot can contribute in sampling, how much bot can contribute in the execution, the past full status, the reporting status, that kind of a deep dive study is also being done and this is required. So when we talk about the organization, I will say this is the start point, wherein you are able to do the complete cost, technical, and the financial feasibility analysis, what is the potential of the bot, how much it can be done in a particular environment, and this is the large potential that the bot can automate these kind of testings. Uh, before we end, two things in the summary form, what is the value add, uh, why the bot is required, I will say uh, the cost per control, significantly it can reduce because the man hour cost, the travel cost uh, can be reduced, Frequency of the audit coverage significantly enhance uh, the effectiveness of the continuous control monitoring much better using the bot. Higher frequency you can do it. Same activity you have to perform 24 by 7, different audit period, different regional office, different locations. Bot can do it. Uh, for the audit, it is a complete replication, uh, not for the bot once the logic is built. Uh, the optimum utilization of the resources can be done for the better human only traits. A bot can help us making the wonderful audit documentation as well. And definitely in the current times, uh, I will say when the COVID impacts are there, we have to perform remotely. I will say bot is a very important enabler uh, for the remote auditing as well. So that's very important. And before I end, I just want to give you a glimpse of the future of internal audit. Just think of a life of a chief audit executive in 2025. Uh, so 7 a.m. 
imagine uh, i'm the chief audit executive i wakes up and on my mobile phone i see an alert sent by the machine a lot of it being performed by the bot uh, what is the health of the control dashboard how much pass how much fail is there any red flag that we have to act upon today while he's getting ready going to the office in his car he sees an alert sent by the machine that there is a possible breach we are, we are talking about the proactive control we are talking about the continuous control monitoring wherein some user tries to split the payment to bypass the approval hierarchy uh, uh, so the bot immediately identifies that uh, sends an alert on the mobile phone you see a red flag there's a possibility of a fraud being happening he immediately triggers a detailed investigation uh, his audit team and the audit manager sitting in the office looks at the document the scanned documents which will be there in the sap uh, he verifies whether yes exactly it's not a false positive it's actually something fishy happening he confirms that by the time the audit head reaches the office he does two action one ask the security deactivates his user id the person is not able to leave the office secondly triggers a stop payment to the bank so that the payment is not eventually disbursed uh, if it's not been done till that uh, uh, you heads back the person sends the alert to the finance team revisit what went wrong why the controls were not strengthened why could somebody do it do the complete root causing so finance takes the leads to handle uh, the transaction part but the chief audit executives immediately revisits its control dashboard whether the controls required to be redefined uh, the scripting needs to be changed and again within the same day by the 5 pm we are ready to see the new control dashboard wherein more proactively we are able to identify such red flags and we have seen the control environment moving from detective to preventive and preventive to reactive so i would want to take rest from that uh, so so uh, the, as a technology using the bot lot many can be done and we as a chartered accountants we as internal auditors i will say it's high time that we start using the technology and make our work more efficient and more effective so thank you so much uh, i would be happy to take some of the questions i'm sure all of you would have that in mind happy to take some of the questions uh, we do have some time for that Now, do we have any questions? I am happy to take that. Uh, Mishra ji, any question? No, sir. Is the question here, sir? Okay, I mean, sir. Is the question Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, I request. Uh, Arpit Kabra to propose a well deserved vote of thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman, sir. And I think, uh, you know, Mohit Bhai, I think uh, really hats off because I think uh, not only did you, uh, you know, if, if every time we talk about theory, but the best part you showed it in practical, actually how things can really happen and, uh, you know, what can it really lead to. And the last example, when you mentioned, you know, you're about to get into an audit, exec audit executive and, you know, you get those messages and all that. I think uh, it's it's a very, very uh, strange and a very interesting concept and interesting world that we're about to enter into. We are at the cusp of, I think, all of this. So I think uh, uh, <clears throat> all of these things are happening in real time basis, you know. Uh, it's, not sure. just, it's not just that we are only discussing these in the conferences. It's actually happening. In fact, uh, there are off the shelf uh, boards available now. For GSC reconciliations, for MCA filings, and you know what not. And uh, as as you showed, you know it can be as customized as whatever event that you want. It can be customized. It's just about uh, the steps that you need to tell. It's like macros, macros on steroids, if you can say. You know these boards. So I think wonderful, uh, uh, brilliant. I think the way you have structured the entire presentation, I think fantastic. And Intel Auditor is no more now an Intel Auditor. I think it's more of a technology function it's more of an intelligent function it's more of 
uh, using the uh, AI and the bots and everything, how smartly so that you can actually start working on something more critical, something more strategic, and uh, leave the uh, you know the compliances, leave the procedures to you know maybe technology, no more dependent on you know manual labor, and largely look at the exceptions and probably look at those kind of reporting. So I think. Wonderful uh, presentation, Moji, and you know, fantastic uh, yeah, elaboration. Uh, the visuals were absolutely fantastic. So, thank you from WRC. You know, it's really uh, indeed, you know, it's a wonderful session that you've taken. And I think we'll have a lot of. Uh, I mean, we need to digest this. We need to actually conceptualize this and see what all can be done. Uh, thank you once again from WRC, and thank you for taking your time and addressing all of us. So thank you so much, Api. Thank you so much, WIRC, for this wonderful opportunity and looking forward to many more to come with the partnership that we are we are starting a new journey today. Thank you so much. Look forward. All right, moving on next, uh, we've got Yukti Arora ji. Uh, Yukti ji, may I request you to please uh, join us on the panel here? Uh, and uh, welcome, welcome, Yukti madam. Just you're doing well, and um, you know, uh, friends, imagine. Uh, and while I'm speaking, I just got a WhatsApp saying that you know, uh, one of the assignments that someone is doing is identifying leakage of how many eggs is broken when it is transferred from, say, a wholesaler to you know, through uh, through a vehicle to uh, say another retail outlet, something like that. So instead of having a person standing and counting how many eggs are dropping or how many wastage is happening what they've done is they've just identified a bot which is applied on the back of the van which scans the entire so the entire carrots and everything is scanned and you know it counts so how many came in and how many went out and automatically a report gets generated and probably the number has been so alarming so I think this is what technology is doing. You know, this is how absolutely an internal audit function, absolutely a risk function that is being taken care of by a small little camera, small little bot. So, uh, welcome to this interesting world. And today uh, we have uh, another faculty amongst us, uh, Yukti Ji Arora. Uh, welcome, Yukti Madam. Uh, I'm happy to introduce you. Uh, she's a process risk and technology practice leader at Omnia. Consulting Services LLP. She has more than two decades of experience in the field of process and risk advisory, a CA, CISA, and ESA, and has previously worked as director with risk advisory function of a big four. She has worked extensively in manufacturing, consumer, automobile, e commerce, BPO, and IT sector. A regular faculty with Digital Accounting and Assurance Board, the DAB of ICI, and Intel Audit Standard Board and Institute of Chartered Accountants of India. She also regularly delivers lectures. And trainings for Isaka and IIA Delhi chapter. We welcome you, madam, and uh, I request you to please uh, take over the session. Thank you, Arpit. Uh, for, uh, thank you, Arpit, for uh, introduction. I believe you can see my slides also. Absolutely, yes. The green. Right. The green. I think that's yeah. a welcome signal. Okay. Correct. And good evening to all. Good evening, Manish ji, and thanks for giving me this opportunity of uh, explaining and sharing my viewpoints on the other topic, which is IT risk management, as well as uh, on the cloud security. So uh, without taking much of our time, uh, because it's a very vast topic and uh, we have only one and a half hours, so I'll quickly uh, go straight into the topic. Uh, that why at this point of time we are talking about IT risk management so that we are going to discuss. Then we are also going to cover what are the top 10 IT risks which are there, some of the IT risk framework, uh, some strategies of risk management. Then we are also going to cover today cloud adoption, uh, overview of cloud, the security risk and controls and some logs which we can see. Uh, from the cloud services and the auditing cloud. These, this is what I'm going to cover in next one and a half uh, hour or discussion. So uh, if we look at in the current world, 
uh, whether it is any business process, any any business process, whether it is financial, purchasing, HR, inventory, and just now Mohit was also showing us, even auditing, everything is being done in some or other digital way, whether it is through use of uh, RPA or whether it is use of blockchain or whether it is use of analytics or whether it is a ERP or simple even our Office 365 Word or Excel. Practically in every, every aspect we are using technology. And uh, gone were the days when the strategies of business were built and we were people, then people were manually delivering it. If you see all the unicorns, they all are actually delivering strategies through a technology platform. And because of that uh, technology advantage, they have been able to scale up to the extent where they can deliver uh, products, services, and various types of uh, things to not only people in India, but globally. And as a result, they have grown so fast in a um, few years, three, four, five, they become unicorn. So this is all thanks to technology, why it is happening and um, that's why like most of it people are saying that if we have to be successful we have to adopt technology and if we have to be sustainable we have to ad adopt technology and every strategy has to be technology driven uh, strategy but if this is a situation then don't we think that it's very very important for us to look at the risk which are there it is absolutely important for us to look at it. And if we look at the bigger picture, let us look at the bigger picture of how IT is enabling us, whether it is in the objective of growing up revenue, it helps us to meet, go and meet and reach out to the customer at a much faster and better pace by giving them digital experience. If we intend to decrease our cost, we need to automate, some com companies are also going for industry 4.0 adoption, wherein they are trying to automate the uh, manufacturing process also by putting some uh, PTS systems or uh, systems wherein they are automating the entire manufacturing uh, process and reporting process of home utilization, etc. Also, what we are seeing is that to increase even our pace of execution, that how we deliver services, how we respond to our customers, how we deliver our products for supply chain. Also, we are seeing lot and lot of use of uh, technology. For regulatory compliances, we are seeing extensive use of technology. Even our tax department um, is becoming totally a faceless, uh, wherein everything is happening on online basis and and also all our responses all our queries and even litigations now have started happening on a online basis so every business objective whether it is of revenue or whether it is cost or whether it is execution and pace of execution or regulatory all the business objectives which are being held or done or met through some or other technology. And therefore it is extremely important that there is a very good partnering and innovation at the technology level. Technology is a board level discussion. It is not only a discussion wherein the only CIO or some person who is sitting at the at a IT desk is doing it. It is actually a, a partnering and innovation because if our objective has to be met and the scale and the type, technology has to play an important role. The technology strategy has to align with the business strategy. Otherwise, it will not be possible. If we are wanting to run at a speed of 200, and if we have a car which is of 80, speed, which can run maximum 100, 110, 120, then we'll, we'll never be able to run with that speed. So therefore, if that is the speed or the strategy or the objective of the business is 
to run at that speed, we need to have those types of technology wherein we get the data, we analyze the data, we respond to data, and we take a corrective and preventive and also very fast action on whatever it is. And um, our architecture should be supporting that type of technology. Architecture should be supporting that type of thing. Similarly, our services of IT needs to be at that level wherein they are able to meet the requirements and they are able to see if there is any areas where um, there are failures and corrective action is taken properly. We need also to have a good level of talent because skill is one of the biggest thing which is missing. Either IT people know IT and they don't know business or business people only know business and they don't know IT. But the combination of what we call as a purple skill is a rare skill in the current world. And that is the type of skill which is actually required also for protecting. Because we are seeing a huge amount of um, attacks being done or uh, frauds being done, not in the traditional way, but in a technology driven way or what we call as a cyber attacks which are totally an attack which is based you know, through a internet and then various types of attacks are happening like phishing attacks and then malware resulting in ransomware in certain cases. Then service delivery also is required to be reliable in order to meet the business objective. So all these objectives in the business of the business are to be met by technology. If that is a scenario, if that is the requirement, if that is the current day expectation, then obviously the risk at the technology side should be the most priority and the most important risk to be considered at a board level discussion. If we look at World Economic Forum um, uh, risk survey, which came out in 2021, the top risk by likelihood, that what are the top three, like top 10 risk by likelihood, if you see, uh, the sixth number is digital power concentration, wherein there, there are few people who are having the complete thing, which is happening in case of uh, certain uh, the cloud service providers. We have Microsoft, Google, AWS, probably like they are controlling a lot at our Facebook or, in, or for instance, the Instagram or the Twitters. They, there are uh, platforms which are holding a huge amount of people and data. And WhatsApp, people are not able to shift from WhatsApp because of this type of thing. There's a digital inequality. Some people are having access to digital. Some people are not having access to digital. And as a result, the growth of the places are, uh, are being impacted. And then cyber security. If, if we look by impact, uh, we see a, one of the top 10 risks is IT infrastructure breakdown, wherein the IT itself is not available and as a result, business cannot be. So both by likelihood and impact, technology risks are very, very important risks in the top 10 risks which the world globally is um, facing. And uh, all these things are because of the fact that these risks are increasing day by day because of digital adoptions which are happening. So how to manage this? How to actually address this? There are certain best practice frameworks which are available. One of the framework for to develop and uh, use is um, in the organization is COVID framework. COVID framework is a very, very um, exhaustive uh, framework. It covers both the governance and the management part of it for the whole of information technology. And it is um, covering the objective of governance to evaluate, direct, and monitor, wherein well, whether you are able to ensure that there is a proper mechanism to monitor people, to assign resources, to ensure KPIs or benefits are achieved. There is a risk management and optimization or resource or uh, organizations um, which are properly al aligned or stakeholder engagement is there. All of that is provided and enabled through this uh, framework. Also, it helps the management to execute it by providing the management objective of aligning, planning and organizing of information and technology resources. It helps them to build, acquire and implement various technology, uh, information and technology solutions, deliver 
service and support them and also monitor, evaluate and assess whether they are being um, able to meet the objective. Yet another framework which is very popular is ISO 31000 framework. It, it is a framework which can be used for IT risk management in certain cases. Uh, it is based on the principles of uh, being integrated so there are multiple um, uh, risks which the organizations are facing all of this framework can be used as an enterprise risk management framework and it risk can also be integrated it has a mechanism of having structures and reporting being very customized to organizations inclusive of all sorts of things dynamic changing as and when it is required and uh, based on the culture and also having a continual improvement any framework, if you see, it requires a commitment and uh, leadership support. And whether it is for designing, implementation, evaluation, improvement, or integration. And to be successful, the, it requires a particular process. And the process is um, to have a proper identification of definition of scope, clear definition of risk, clear definition of risk areas and categories, and the criteria of risk assessment and based on that having a mechanism of identification of risk analyzing it based on the risk appetite and then uh, evaluating it and treating it on regular basis and um, once we are doing this thing it needs to be regularly monitored and um, all or reviewed so that just to assess that it is meeting the management uh, requirement and also the risk are being addressed in the right manner and uh, therefore it requires certain reporting and recording also on regular basis so that there is a continuous content communication and consultation which happens throughout the process of risk management so these are some of the important framework and if we look at the top technology risk which have been uh, there so this survey came from um, isaka along with productivity that did this survey and as per them the top 10 technology risk of 2021 are uh, these cyber breach which also came as one of the risk in our world economic forum privacy and confidentiality that is like building and lack the trust element of it which gets lost when the information is leaked uh, the regulatory compliance because there are so many multiple compliances now the data with keeps on traveling across globe and every country every place they have their own regulations around it even in india um, there are a lot of regulations which are coming uh, which are in the face of development uh, whether it is on the privacy side of it or whether it is on the use of social media or the way the monitoring has to happen uh, by the OTT platforms. So there are multiple regulations and compliances which are adding and adding and whenever the data is crossing those boundaries, if it relates to the people who are resident over there, those types of compliance become applicable to the technology which is being used in that place. And then the risk is of user access. Most of the breaches happen because of uh, your wrong user access and uh, a risk of lack of incident monitoring. Because if we see a history of all the cyber attacks, we will identify that 90% of it was because of the fact that there was a small incident which can, didn't get identified on a timely basis. And slowly those things started spreading and then the malware resulted into a ransomware. Uh, and, and at the, the other point of time, we didn't have a mechanism to respond. So that's a disaster recovery type of risk wherein people uh, and companies do all sorts of measures to put pr processes, but they forget to have a proper measures on end-to-end a mechanism of encryptions of data of making a backup which is available and that is therefore a, one of the very very big risk which has come out another important risk is lack of data governance we don't know where our data is who is having access to their data why the person is having the access what all data we have so and data is said to be the um, goal in the current environment so that management is another risk one of the top 10 risks then the top third party risk 
this because mostly all the services which we use in IT are from either some or service OEMs who are providing their products or from the third parties who are developing and providing solutions for it or the people who are managing and monitoring it. In the world of IT and technology, there is a huge environment of third party. If we look at major uh, cyber attacks which have happened, whether it was a solar wind attack or whether it was an uh, attack on uh, LinkedIn or on the Facebook or on the AWS, most of it we will identify that the root cause of it was either misconfiguration or it was a third party risk. These are the two major reasons for those types of um, so this is another very very big risk and the, most of the companies in the current environment are adopting a model of outsourcing where they are outsourcing the complete IT operations or they are outsourcing the complete infrastructure management or they are outsourcing the application uh, development and maintenance activity or they are outsourcing the review of the security incidents. So these third parties, if they are not properly managed and governed, they bring an additional amount of risk on the technology side. Another important area is of risk which we need to see is the remote workplace infrastructure where we are at the current environment. Lot and lot of people are working remotely and um, many people have, uh, and companies have said that this is not, not what uh, they will change even after the COVID is over. This will be the way in which they will work and we are talking about hybrid workplaces wherein people can work from home or they can work from office. So this remote workplace infrastructure brings another set of risks which is uh, of how to manage this, how to ensure that uh, there are no privacy and cyber breaches. Uh, people are um, safe in terms of usage of their technology. The codes or developments which are happening, they are properly managed and developed and there is no breach of the codes. And also whether the objective or the, or the systems are being available at all the time so that they can provide the services at the same pace as it was when they came to office. And yet another important risk is the availability risk of systems being available, technology being available, support being available, as well as the element of data being available. So this is another uh, risk. So these are the top 10 risks which have been identified by ISACA on the uh, technology side of it. And if we look at the uh, way in which we can manage it, so we did a, also we did a survey and we identified that um, some of the key risks which are common across all industry and across all sorts of uh, organization and uh, these are some of the risks whether it was a small or medium type of business or whether it was a very large enterprise but these risks are very common across uh, the domain and uh, these are the risks which and some of the mitigation mechanisms or strategies uh, which I'm going to now discuss uh, one number one being cyber vulnerability and cyber risk management. This is one of the topmost risk which is there and applicable across domain. And it impacts not only the organization, but as an individual also, it is something which is impacting even at a personal level. So what is the risk? The risk is of various types of threats, malware, phishing attacks and vulnerabilities which are coming on day-to-day -day basis. They are attacking not only uh, sophisticated systems, but they are attacking uh, even the smaller systems. They are being attacks on the mobile devices. They are attacks on our mobile handsets. They are attack on various types of um, Office O365 um, platforms um, and those types of things. So what an organization can do to manage and monitor this? One of the best way to do is to have a 
regular assessment of various open nodes, various open ports, various identifying what are the vulnerabilities and what are the areas where the comp uh, company need to make sure that they have plugged in those vulnerability and they are protected. So doing a comprehensive VAPT or a regular check is an activity which an organization can do. Then there are various uh, tools which are currently being available to uh, for the purpose of identification and also there are intelligent tools which are there which uh, identify on proactive basis and take a action of uh, blocking those um, uh, attacks and things. So they are like various types of antivirus solutions which are being provided. Along with those antivirus solutions, um, there is a functionality of implementing and uh, uh, configuring the firewalls and putting a threat intelligence protections on it. Um, putting a data DLP layer over it so that those types of incidents do not uh, happen in our environment. Another important way in which the companies can protect themselves is having a proactive uh, security incident monitoring. There are various uh, tools of SIM tools which are available and with the, within those SIM tools there is uh, threat intelligence also which is built. Uh, through which the uh, advanced threat identification can happen and automatic blocking of those uh, threats can happen. So that is another area which the companies can adopt to manage this type of risk. But biggest of it is a continuous training and awareness program. This is the first and the foremost thing if the people are aware if the people are, um, are, are, are understanding there are possibility of phishing attacks happening, there is a possibility of people trying to get into the system and they are vigilant and if they find anything amiss, they raise an alarm and discuss it with the information security officer or the CIO or whosoever is responsible for security within the organization. I think 80 to 90 percent of the attacks can be prevented. So continuous training and awareness is one of the very, very important part. And, and for that, regular mailers can be sent. Then uh, for business continuity planning and disaster recovery, for all the critical system, uh, even in the smallest of small office, to a, um, the data is very, very critical. And, and we need to at least have a program or process to protect the data which is there because it is the core of the business. Also, uh, the when we talk about BCP, we also talk about the human element of it. We have seen that the pandemic, which when it impacted, and it impacted the health and the well-being, both physical as well as mental well-being of the people. So when we are planning for BCP and DR, we have to make sure that this part is covered. And at least on the infrastructure side, there is a proper disaster recovery because God forbid if any uh, incident happen, at least if we are having those types of alternate arrangement, we can recover and be back. Otherwise, there would be no mechanism to work. And um, some of the surveys have suggested that the companies which um, actually built a DR uh, because they tried building a DR, they were properly prepared for having a way of working uh, out of office um, in a much better way than those people who had never had and done some DR activity. So uh, DR is one of the important elements and the way to do this is to at least identify your critical application. Not everything would be relevant and important. Um, build a program or plan of how you can recover those. Uh, prepare for uh, doing some type of data restoration testing. At least once in a year, do some DR uh, testing. Identify what could be the single source of failure. It could be on the people side. It could be on the process side. It could be lack of particular file itself or it could be the lack of um, a user ID or password of one of the critical things. So we have to identify those and make sure at least for that, we have an adequate redundancies and backup. With. 
and then skill set of a right set of people is another important thing uh, as i mentioned third party vendor risk is one of the very very biggest risk um, because um, there are various types of vendors which the organizations are using whether it is for customer services or whether it is for the supply chain management or whether it is for the purpose of managing the customer relationship or for the purpose of hr uh, which is primarily outsourced in many of the organization uh, or for the purpose of um, a, a simple task of administration which is outsourced or an it service provider who is just providing a remote support all these vendors they need to be properly identified and classified that who is what carrying what type of risk and according to that the controls need to be built in and according mechanisms needs to be there for monitoring them then cloud security in india uh, we are rapidly growing growing and uh, going for a cloud adoption specifically um, the startup community they develop the entire systems on the cloud platform also um, most of us are using cloud whether it is a google cloud or whether it is our gmail system or uh, emailing system or uh, any sorts of uh, knowledge management system so largely we are using some or other cloud in our day to day uh, working and with this uh, covid impact Uh, many people who are not using or having cloud they moved to the cloud because that was the only mechanism in which a cost efficient way they could uh, access the information data and stay connected and launch various uh, services also so building a clear strategy around is one of the key uh, element and in case we do not have that then it may be a very wasteful expenditure as and the objective of the business may not be met for instance in certain cases if we go for a cloud adoption and in one place we have taken a website on one of the service provider and the emailing system is of different service provider then linking and doing our social media campaigns and all it will require much more effort and much more cost so having a proper strategy identifying for which purposes we are going to use which type of vendor what is going to be our architecture is one of the very important element uh, so as to meet the business objective and for that we need to have a proper understanding of our business build a strategy including the road map of how we are going to move from one thing to another also we are required to have a proper understanding of our cloud environment our architecture our alignment with the data and conduct a regular security assessment people feel that if they have moved to cloud that there is no need to do uh, any assessment but that is absolutely wrong because the service provider is only a service provider they will do what you have configured or what you have opted for if you do not give a uh, restrict access then the people who are going to be having access to cloud will be having a complete access cloud service provider will not restrict it on its own so doing a proper assessment selection also many a times we have to move from one cloud service provider to another that how the data will actually migrate then we also need to see who all our are because it's a multi tenant type of uh, system on cloud so who all are there what about the competitor what can is there any information which can be leaked all those data impact assessment also needs to be done then sla also service level agreements although these service level agreements are quite uh, similar but we need to monitor it whether it is being done or not and specifically whenever there is a change of services or law of regulation and there is a huge skill set also which is required to operate on cloud it is not like that that you don't need any it person in case you move to cloud and they can't they but there are architectures of cloud which may be required there will be people who will be required to manage and monitor cloud reports so all those things um, training and change management expect is another area which as a strategy risk management strategy the organization must have hmm. 
then on the hr side um, as i mentioned that it is again a very very big uh, challenge that the skill sets uh, or the purpose skill sets are missing and there are very few people who have uh, understanding as well as the skill to adopt to the newer technology it is more at the change level as well as at the level of uh, upskilling them also there is a limited number of um, succession planning which many organizations are doing so this is another risk which needs to be considered and what it requires is a continuous upskilling and training and proper succession planning programs which is done to develop the leadership to develop the pipeline uh, so that the organization is able to sustainably grow on the technology side of it. Uh, regulatory compliance is one of the biggest thing because data trans is transferred and moves across the borders and there are increasing number of cyber privacy and IT compliance requirement. We need to understand the requirements uh, of every land where the data is getting transferred if or if we are having data of any other foreign uh, citizen and then those laws become applicable to us so in those cases we need to have a very very robust mechanism of having a good compliance framework which can easily identify new compliance requirement identify what are the monitoring mechanisms for it what is the reporting mechanism for it what are the skill sets which are required and, and as a result, there is a mechanism to design, implement, and monitor it. We have seen uh, there was a uh, Twitter strict, still struggling to comply with the compliance requirement, which has come because of um, the OTT guidelines which have come. Now, um, building uh, systems which have a security, privacy, controls, audit logging is also extremely important. Uh, like to give you an example, um, many a times uh, like GDPR, GDPR uh, requires that there is a consent which is taken and of, of how the data is going to be and also the communication is done of how the data is going to be used and how the data is going to be preserved and in case there is a requirement of the customer to delete the data or remove the data then the data needs to be deleted or removed. So if our systems are not designed in that way, it becomes extremely difficult to implement these types of regulations in, uh, when they come. So understanding the requirement of security and control right from the day we are building our solution and making sure that those things are configurable and they can easily be done when the requirement comes. For instance, in our country also, MCA brought a guidelines of audit logging. Now, some of the system, even the largest use system tally, although they, it they do have that feature of audit logging, but it, it can be disabled. There are various uh, instances where it can be changed. The complete details are not available in certain cases. Uh, various types of reports which are required are not available at a single screen. So, so those types of challenges come when the regulatory compliances requirement keep on coming and there is a new thing. So when we ever we are preparing or designing or developing IT technology, one has to make sure that best in class security and controls are identified and implemented right from the day one. Because if they are implemented in course of time, it, whatever regulations may come, it will be able to tackle with those types of requirements. Uh, yet another important risk which is there is on the work from home or mobile device thing. Now, because of work from home environment, there is a risk that somebody may attack the endpoints or the laptops or the desktops or the mobile devices which are given with the employees and they could be uh, and those types of systems when they connect to the vpn or when they connect then they can infect the uh, organization systems uh, by malware or some or it could be a, some malicious insider also who is trying 
so to prevent all these things the organizations need to have a mechanism that i they should always allow through a vpn only and that vpn should be primarily a multi factor authentication and uh, there should be no connectivity which should be allowed from a, a public network without it being encrypted another important thing which is required is that there should be a proper endpoint solutions which companies should think of implementing wherein there is an encryption of their endpoints there are mechanisms to monitor if there is a if any device gets stolen or lost or if any data gets stolen from them it is clearly identified and so that the business objectives are, are identified and met by those types of thing also there is a need for having a proper incident management and response mechanism yet another risk which is very much there in the it environment is uh, risk of data leakage and prevention because uh, data is one of the most critical element and if we don't have a proper mechanism to control uh, the data it could be a huge regulatory sanction it could be a loss of trust it could be loss of goodwill and including the loss of valuation of the company as we have seen in case of air india where there was a loss of information and it, uh, we have seen in the case of some of uh, in india larger companies although they had best of the systems which were implemented but when, still there was a loss of information or data so what can be done to prevent these types of thing it is not only implementing those tools but it is actually monitoring it also on a regular basis and these tools should be actually preventive in nature they should prevent the people from doing an activity and block it on proactive basis 90% of the configurations which are happening on dlp tools are reactive in nature they are just sending notification they are so just sending information that somebody has tried to se send the sensitive mail outside um, uh, the domain of the organization or somebody has tried to access a data which was identified as confidential but they are not blocking anything so uh, proactive blocking Uh, is one of the important element uh, of implementation of dlp and regular monitoring of incident these are the two success pillar of data governance confidentiality and privacy infrastructure availability we saw one of the uh, risk in the world economic forum uh, top 10 risk globally was of it infrastructure availability and this is because the infrastructure which is a backbone of any organization if it breaks down then the organization revenue operations every every aspect of the business would be impacted and therefore it is very very important that the companies have a extremely good risk management strategy with respect to these and have an adequate amount of redundancy which is built in they have a mechanism of regular monitoring of uh, service level agreements wherein they are making sure that the availability of system is there the vendor who is supporting those systems they are monitoring and making sure that the systems are available if it is on cloud then the availability of the clouds uh, is as it is required otherwise they could go to another redundant system and make sure that the systems are always always available and there is also a requirement that review the active directory network hardware so that um, and just test it periodically so, so that they are sure that they would be able to recover in case something goes wrong on the um, strategy side one of the biggest risk which the companies are facing nowadays is on the knowledge management larger companies they are operating largely on the silo basis Now, some people are, who is working on architecture only knows about architecture the person who is working on the security is working on security without conversation with the business as well as with the every other department of it so and there is totally a lack of uh, collaboration which is uh, there and sharing of information and knowledge 
because every day in technology new tools and technology new tools and ways of doing things are happening new threats are coming new events are happening <coughs> so it's extremely important that there is a proper knowledge management both on within the it department as well as outside the it department and the, they are very well defined kpis for the people to educate and to share knowledge and to collaborate with each other because systems nowadays are very collaborative systems and the success of an organization depends on collaboration so that's a very very important uh, thing which should be there and also having a diverse technology and diverse skill set that is another uh, good strategy which companies can adopt so that in case some person is not available or the uh, then they can easily uh, continue the business uh, in the way it is and also move on it and also there should be a regular uh, senior management uh, involvement wherein they share the ideas there's a regular brainstorming and a very good assessment of any risk which is there and then measures are there so these are the top 10 risks which companies are facing which is uh, risk of zero day threats dr side uh, vendor side risk cloud security succession planning skill sets then cross border uh, regulatory compliances mobile devices working uh, from home data governance which is on managing the data protection part of it strict, and then infrastructure availability and knowledge management and collaborative mechanism so these are the risk and some of the risk management strategies which we have uh, discussed now we will go to the cloud side of it because this is where mostly the companies are currently working on and if you look at it um, uh, the recent nascom uh, study which has come out that uh, approximately 170 billion rupee in financial year 2020 20 was the cloud market and it is set to increase at the rate of 30 percent and reach the level of three uh, 630 billion so see the level of adoption and see the level and the size of the market which is there in india itself and um, interesting thing to note in that survey was that 1000 plus uh, small and medium businesses in the were survey 60 uh, percent were already using uh, cloud and um, uh, and almost half were there at the uh, early stage of adoption and what also came out through this survey was that approximately 28 to 30 percent uh, of small and medium sized business um, would be on cloud by 2000 uh, 25 uh, that is the projection which is there then also SMB which is um, small and medium sized business they have uh, been able to achieve the increase in productivity by 30 percent that's a huge number and uh, also reduce the cost by 15 to 20 percent uh, what type of services um, which are an opportunity uh, on the cloud that came out to be a security services analytics and offline to online are the three major services then 50% uh, of the respondents say that major uh, problem in cloud ad adoption is lack of management support and second was talent and third was capital so these were the three main reasons why they couldn't uh, go for a cloud adoption in a much faster pace and there are regular policies and awareness programs which are there and these were some of the surveys which came very recently from nascom side so that way we can understand that the cloud market is going to be huge in uh, india already it's a very big market and which is there already and what type of services we are using on cloud um, as of now, people are using primarily uh, infrastructure as a service, wherein they use the server, storage, network, operating systems, or some type of support of facilities and monitoring, those types of services they are using. 
and um, but gradually as these uh, companies move forward and they adopt cloud they go into the extent of having a platform as services so what is platform as services when they also use the hosting platform that means they host their rather than having their own um, environment or data center they host it on the uh, they host the applications on the cloud platform and that's where they use platform of services and through the middleware connect to their application and many organizations are using software as services as we are seeing um, you people using various types of uh, zoom services or these types of um, even our emailing services all these are software azure services office 365 these all be on cloud so these all are software sometimes which we are using on a cloud some of it um, uh, some of the larger uh, service providers on the cloud which offer all three are AWS, Google, Azure. These are the three large service provider which provide all. Uh, software as services primarily being offered by SAP, Oracle. They are providing those ERPs also on cloud. Uh, and nowadays people are adopting all three models wherein they are going for a public that means a complete third party cloud service provider or sometimes they are deploying something in house they have a server or data center in house but some part of their services they are going for cloud specifically for dr site and all they are building on cloud that's a hybrid model and many a times a larger company see more advantage of building their own cloud uh, um, specifically on the infrastructure side of it or the platform side of it wherein uh, they have their own premises uh, cloud and all their com companies across geography they connect to one um, one place and and that's how they provide their it infrastructure hosting and platform services so uh, this adoption uh, as i mentioned is increasing and we are seeing all sorts of models being offered uh, all sorts of um, things already in uh, india as well as globally and many companies have tried to define cloud but i would like to share the nist uh, definition because it is one of the very good definition of cloud that it is a uh, broadband access wherein you can at connect through internet and it is as and when you require that time of you can take the services it takes advantage of pooling of resources of many people uh, uh, infrastructure and things so as to meet the requirement of various uh, customer it is you can expand and uh, easily be, have many more systems provision it it is very scalable and elastic and every part of it is measured right from the uh, storage the type processing bandwidth who are the active user every part of the services is measured and charged so these are some of the important characteristic of cloud and typically cloud is not simply virtualization that means it is not just you are trying to put everything on virtual machine and you say you are on cloud it is actually more than virtualization wherein um, people just not only connect but they also exchange data and data is stored in a central mechanism it is not a service oriented architecture only but it is applying the processes of it wherein you use all these types of thing and like uh, unlike traditional hosting where everything is hosted in one place they are multiple scalable and elastic offering because cloud you can easily expand and it is very very scalable and elastic so cloud is not just virtualization or soa principle or uh, only a traditional hosting it is much more than that it is uh, elastic and scalable it is uh, totally something which can be in, uh, increased and used over a greater period of time uh, there are various um, uh, um, ways in which the company can go to a cloud there are various mechanism of service delivery uh, of cloud service and 
every company has to define and decide their own path and depending on their path and uh, their decision only um, the various types of um, responsibilities come on elements of security governance security uh, data security application security platform infrastructure and physical security so if we look at um, self hosted um, uh, private cloud uh, so every part of the responsibilities on the client on the customer itself on the on the user itself within the organization itself that is the responsibility they are only responsible for governance data security application hosting platform infrastructure physical everything they are responsible but if we have taken a private cloud and built it um, in location with others cloud service provider certain part of the responsibilities get shared and shifted and that is infrastructure and some part of physical security and if we go with the infrastructure as services that means we go and use server plat and then we use the storage or we use the operating systems um, of the cloud service provider so basically governance secure compliance is the organization responsibility data is the organization responsibility because we are only taking the infrastructure but platform and um, uh, is some part of it becomes a shared responsibility depending on the type of services which we have taken but infrastructure and physical security becomes a um, quite uh, more a cloud service provider some uh, responsibility and if we see the responsibilities in case of platform service provider as we keep on growing the um, the responsibilities keep on increasing on the cloud service provider in case of service software as a service where we are hosting and we are using this that as a software many part of the responsibility shifts with the cloud service provider but yes the data remains the ownership of data remains with the organization even providing access to the people remain the organization or responsibility um, providing and implementing our company's policies remains our responsibilities so those types of responsibilities are shared responsibilities which are there this chart is extremely important to understand because if we do not understand this part of it it becomes very very difficult to identify and uh, design and say that who is going to do what and monitor those types of control and as an internal auditor um, unless we know who is owning it who is responsible for those controls and how they are being done and monitored we can't do an effective audit so it's extremely important to understand this uh, table mm. so now let us look at some of the risks which are there in the uh, in the cloud computing and uh, see the biggest risk which is there is a concentration risk why i say concentration risk because there are lot and lot of people it's a single place where a person can get if a hacker gets in they can get a huge amount of information not only for one enterprise but for many enterprise and they become a bigger target and, uh, and bigger source of information and data so uh, the risk on the cloud goes higher because of it is a being concentrated risk and therefore you need a better security mechanisms uh, at the cloud service provider and when we are evaluating any cloud service provider we should really focus on what type of security what type of privacy what types of controls they have to make sure and address the risk uh, which is there to our data which is going to be uh, hosted on the cloud or the risk of our infrastructure which would be on the cloud because from the infrastructure person can come inside and get an access to the client and uh, applications our own applications also then another important risk which one should uh, consider and look for is the third party risk because that is um, one of the biggest uh, a thing which happens in cloud uh, the responsibilities pass to the cloud service provider and they are we are uh, as an enterprise responsible on the controls which are there with the cloud service provider so if they do not have a proper controls of uh, making sure that 
whatever access is there is properly reviewed and then the proper mechanisms are there on the network security they are adequate mechanism of monitoring various types of threat intelligence mechanism there is a way of putting every data in a secured encrypted form if, and they are actually doing it and implementing it if that comfort is not there then the risk of it is very very high and uh, and because we are totally totally dependent and there is no access to their that environment and we don't know also where exactly our information and data is the third most important risk is the gaps which are there the control gaps um the whatever risk were or controls which were there when we were traditionally hosting it in our platform the same risk and the same controls are expected to be there with the uh, cloud service provider also and uh, but unfortunately the um, we don't know what is the status of those thing because neither we are in, uh, implementing those controls nor we are monitoring and reviewing those types of controls in a very very effective manner and if there are any control gap it can impact our environment directly so so and not knowing those types of gap is another big risk which the companies carry when they move to cloud service provider uh, yet another important thing is on the increasing zero day threats attacks which are there the sophisticated attacks which are happening in the current environment uh, specifically the way the people are um, getting into and doing the, uh, the attack if we are on a hybrid model that means we are using partly on the public cloud and partly on the private cloud our own cloud what happens is any risk on them also comes to our because we there is an exchange of information data in the interface which is built and through those interfaces those risks can come so that's the another risk which one need to look for and cover uh, then yet another risk is uh, consumer or shadow it because um, many people when they move to cloud they don't have a specific person who actually uh, manages uh, the entire cyber side of it or the it side of it because they feel that we are using software as a service or we are using cloud and the cloud server um, is being provided the cloud service provider is providing those types of service and we don't have an adequate it person or a technology specialist or a cyber security uh, specialist who look at those uh, end thing and as a result uh, many of things which are required to be configured in fact 80% of the cloud attacks which have happened this is because of misconfiguration so misconfiguration of cloud is one of the top most risk in the cloud service thing so if uh, if I, we don't have a right set of people to do it we are exposing our environment to a huge risk and that has happened in uh, I, there are a lot of example like capital one which was one of the uh, typical example wherein uh, there was a misconfiguration and as a result of it the uh, systems data was leaked so um, what can be actually done to protect it uh, so what are the strategies which the companies can adopt to prevent those cyber risks? One of the biggest thing the organization should do is to first of all have a complete inventory of their assets and data and um, what is in on premises, what is on cloud and have a clear data flow diagram and a clear identification of uh, where uh, data is getting input and how it is moving around the journey and specifically because there are privacy requirement and compliance requirements which are required also what is very very important is to have a very well defined virtualized network and infrastructure wherein you one, one should really know what type of information is coming in and what type of information is going out that 
see we from the cloud service provider once the information goes the network responsibility monitoring and the various types of firewalls and all they are there but till the information is leaving from us to the cloud service provider and coming from them to us that ingress and egress we have to only address and it, the configuration of uh, various firewalls subnets segmentations network access control list all of them are the responsibilities of the organization which is moving to the cloud cloud service provider provide those types of things but they need to be properly identified and configured if we do not configure it then there is a huge risk which is there um, the various cases we have seen that um, the wireless um, uh, WAF was not properly configured and because of that there was a attack and a cyber attack and it led to uh, loss of information and data similarly um, another important thing is to have a complete our policy uh, which is there on the cyber security on the various information security that needs to be implemented uh, on the cloud environment then the virtual servers and endpoints they need to be properly hardened because if they are not hardened when that means if they are not properly defined and configured uh, in terms of uh, protecting them from any uh, uh, attack then they would be subject to weakness and they would be subject to uh, weak link through which the um, uh, outsider can come into our environment uh, many companies who are moving into cloud they use uh, various open uh, source language and they develop in various open um, uh, platforms and then they integrate and host those services on the cloud there is a very good inter integration they do through uh, putting the codes on the github and from github they go to the cloud uh, service thing that requires a very good understanding of the entire architecture also it requires a very very good understanding of uh, development security operations wherein every part of the development it goes for a validation check and it is there is a complete check which happens on the code uh, before it actually goes into the cloud service environment otherwise um, uh, these codes could be subject to um, a cyber attack then um, regularly reviewing there are a lot and lot of logs which are available uh, cloud services uh, provider they provide lots of logs on for us to monitor but it is up to us how we monitor those types of logs and how we use those functionalities and notifications which are there and some of the things like building uh, sim uh, keeping up with the um, elastic environment are something which we need to do with respect to them and um, if one cloud service provider is not available then we need to also have a strategy to move to another cloud service provider so we need to think about it that in case uh, we are not satisfied with the cloud service provider or the rates are going to be very high in course of time or they are every um, the features or the functionality which you want are not available with those or your architecture the overall business architecture is not aligning with the cloud service provider architecture so in that case you need to identify an alternate uh, cloud service provider also and keep on making sure that within the agreement those types of things are there there is a data portability there is a code portability there is an infrastructure portability fax, uh, features and functionality which are there there's a regular backups which are available and and then to be resilient we need to also make sure that we are making uh, incidents and all we are monitoring on a regular basis and some of the important element to do this is to have a very very robust governance mechanism so we need to understand why we are purchasing a services when we are purchasing what kind of systems which we are going to go on cloud and what type of policies we have and how we are going to implement them and who is going to own and manage and monitor those types of things if we do not have these things 
then uh, there is an every possibility that the cloud return on investment will not be achieved because what may happen in this case is that you will have an un, uh, large number of users having access and uh, and then you paying off it and the charges not being uh, as per the requirement or they could be people uh, your policies of your organization could be breached for instance they could log in from their own personal account if those governance are not properly done so providing a clear policy building those configuration is one of the very very essential uh, step having a clear ownership if it is not done then there would be no monitoring of those things and the return on investment on cloud will not come if we do not document our architecture well if when we develop and build new technologies or new products and services then in that case our alignment may not happen so having those types of documentation is extremely important then cyber risk what we have configured because misconfiguration as i mentioned is one of the very very big risk which is there on the cyber on risk of cloud environment then regular monitoring of those services contracts making sure because our company act require our data to be within india making sure that the cloud service provider stores and puts the data and have of services wherein we know where the source of our data is and whether where exactly it is being stored and whether it is within that india so we in most of the cloud service provider whether it is aws or we have an option to select where do you data center which we want to host on so unless and until we have those mechanism we clearly identify compliance requirement and we tell the it person that you have to configure it within india the systems may not be implemented in that way so these are some of the considerations which one should do while implementing the cloud and some of the important um, uh, areas or the controls which we can have is to have a proper well defined access policies a uh, proper inventory of various types of uh, cloud configuration various types of services or the resources of cloud which we are using the servers which we are using the ids which we are using uh, making sure that we have a proper data flow diagrams identifying which data is within our uh, uh, our enterprise and which is on hosted on the cloud how the data is flowing what type of data is being stored because many breaches have happened and we um, and the cloud and even the organizations they were not aware that whether there has been leakage of privacy related information or not and it was only after proper review and root cause analysis and then looking at the incident they came to know that okay there was a loss and incidentally none of the losses were identified or uh, loss or these types of breach were identified by the organization themselves some other third service provider or the third party identified and told them that your data is visible here or your data is available on the dark web or something like that so having a clear inventory managing this monitoring it is one of the very very key element of move when we move on the governance side uh, on the cloud thing looking at the risk making sure that it is not only return on investment which we are measuring but also the risk of operations also the risk of legal and compliance also the risk of elements of reputation is what we review when we do our risk assessment that's a very very important thing to be considered then uh, we we have to make sure all our cyber policies are implemented on cloud our organization structure clearly have a person responsible to manage the security risk or cyber risk on cloud and we train the resources on those uh, from these are some of the controls on the logical access controls we should be knowing who is having access to information and data um, who is given an access who is doing uh, what type of review and monitoring uh, how the user access is being done whether we a person is accessing on the vpn and through a proper encrypted mode or not uh, that is another important element 
then uh, configuration of network uh, making sure we have implemented proper hardening in terms of um, network devices which are being used uh, ensuring that we have implemented logs on uh, cloud for security monitoring and logging and we do also have on our side the uh, various mechanism to monitor and log the incidents which have happened uh, they would be lot of developments which will be deployed on the cloud if we are using an infrastructure or platform then uh, in this case we need to properly identify what what are the virtual servers what are the storage what is the various types of infrastructure of firewall etc which we are using on the cloud and any patch or any changes which goes through we should make sure that changes are properly tested and then only deployed and configured on this um, uh, the incorrect configuration is biggest biggest risk which is there so that needs to be properly documented and tested and reviewed on a periodical basis on the it operation side um, it asset configuration monitoring and logging of various incidents encryption of data and disaster recovery is very important and on the billing and monitoring side one needs to look regularly look at the reports of usage consumption of space consumption of various devices <coughs> and monitor the controls on regular basis so these are some of the important controls and there are various reports which are available on any cloud um, i have taken an example of some of the reports which are available on aws but very similar reports are available on uh, google cloud and they are also available in azure cloud like cloud trail which provides because when we are connecting an application it is an api call which happens so it helps in tracking the api then uh, vpc flow log it helps us to identify any uh, network processing or malicious traffic so that we can uh, we can it, it can be prevented by if you are looking at these logs then we can block those um, uh, virtual private uh, ips and all those things so those types of monitoring uh, is uh, uh, possible in the current day cloud environment configuration we can constantly review the uh, configuration of cloud and see what resources are configured and we can also set a benchmark and there are benchmarks which are already available on aws and this report helps us to identify wherever there are weak policies or it also maintains the uh, log of various types of configuration which can be used for audit purposes then elastic load balancer access log it helps to um, uh, prevent malicious activity and uh, troubleshoots the user because it keeps the complete log of the users and the and the loads uh, which they are giving then web access firewall log this is another very very important log it uh, gives us information of flow of information traffic and uh, uh, and also identify and troubleshoot if any user is having access related issue or they're not able to get an access on cloud so this report is through which we can monitor and identify those types of thing uh, yet another important report is inspector assessment report this inspector assessment report is a, a report which gives information on various vulnerabilities on a proactive basis and um, once we close those um, vulnerabilities then it gives us status also so it helps in tracking the compliance uh, s3 uh, bucket s3 logs they are also a very very good source of information because every detail every work every change or every request which is done it is stored in this uh, log and through this we can see whether um, the, how the architecture is being there if any changes have been made if any request has been raised and whether the it has been done in a proper way so for chain management testing these logs become extremely important uh, another important log is the database rd s log um, this 
gives the complete information of disk space which is being utilized or the uh, uh, database network traffic and it, if there are certain errors and all we can identify through this and correct it lambda log is another important log it talks it tells about the codes um, validation if it is working as expected and they are again very very useful in uh, testing the changes before they are deployed in a production environment so these are some of the logs which are available which an auditor can use while doing the audit and making sure that the things are very well implemented and um, if we see how we can test these types of uh, thing so lot many places what we have seen is that they are uh, soc2 and various types of third party audit reports which are available so for certain cases we can leverage and we can uh, use that but whenever we are using the third party uh, reports or uh, soc2 report which is provided by the service provider we have to very very carefully understand what what are the user control consideration that means uh, controls which are to be configured at the user entity level uh, specifically access related control change uh, deployment and testing related controls uh, controls relating to configuration controls relating to monitoring and taking corrective actions on it making sure that vulnerabilities are plugged making sure that various types of um, security uh, incident even monitoring is done by the user these all things are even though the cloud service provider provide these services but the responsibilities of these controls are not with them the responsibilities of them are with the entity who is using the cloud so whenever we are using these cloud soc2 report we have to identify this uccs and then those uccs all need to be tested by us only so in case it is an in house so 100% of it testing has to be done directly by the in house audit service provider and if it is um, not in house and it is on clouds as partially as in case of infrastructure side of it then the data center physical environmental controls would be the part of cloud service provider responsibility then console management which is where you configure the infrastructure and all that will be partly our and partly mostly it would be on the side of the third party service provider and then storage file storage and all that will be responsibility on the third party service provider and we can look and uh, depend on the soc2 report or the third party audit report but we have to be considerate as i said on the user control consideration and if it is a platform as a service that means we are using uh, not only infrastructure but we are hosting it on their platform and the, we are using some apis or application pro, um, integrators so in that case um, except for application rest all will be the responsibility of the third party service provider or the and we can rely on the soc2 report but we have to be considerate as i mentioned on user control consideration and if it is software as services as for example in case of sap or uh, oracle which are hosted on the cloud and the software also we are using in that case mostly it will be the third party but since the configuration of software depends on us how we are using it and defining user making sure that data is properly uh, input and process and all that is our responsibility so we need to audit it directly so this is in a sense of how the audit in case of cloud so various cloud service model um, need to be that um, we can now take up any questions if we have uh, do we have any questions Aniket ji, uh, do we Hello. have any questions? 
हेलो या हाँ मैम क्वेश्चन नहीं दे रहा हूँ क्वेश्चन दे रहा हूँ So do we have any questions? Can take in some questions now. And we are not having any questions on the chat box. Okay, so there is one question: If uh, SOC two report is not available. And VAPT certificate by third party is there. Can we rely on that VAPT report? No, I don't think so. You can only rely because VAPT is doing a very very limited amount of testing only on the network side of it. And when if it is doing testing only and only on the network side of it, and it is not clearly laying down what is other responsibilities which have been done and where the things are effective and where the things are ineffective. that report will not provide us complete comfort on the uh, on the cloud service provider i don't think so we can rely on the vapt any other questions we have no ma'am we are not having any questions so okay there is one more question of what should be the key key areas to be seen to prevent any misconfiguration uh, that's a very very interesting uh, question um, you should first of all see for uh, see and when it, whenever we are uh, onboarding on any cloud service provide, um, provider we should first of all have a very well defined architecture diagram with us and clearly prepare a data flow uh, diagram and see and a map at to an asset inventory and once we have done that type of thing then only we should start configuring it making sure that we have uh, con there, there is a hardening checklist which is being provided by mostly all these cloud service providers so we can harden that uh, we can put the uh, because passwords and all they are pre configured they are there but we have to just select those types of thing encryption again we have to just select and make it enable uh, then we have to also make sure that access is provided to the right set of person to right type of tables and all and for that a very well defined um, entire data flow diagram and a uh, asset inventory would be extremely extremely important and uh, also knowing which one is a virtual um, point and which one is not which one is a user which who is not a virtual user so understanding that also becomes very very critical because many a times misconfiguration happens wherein a um, user is defined a virtual user and when it is defined virtual user then many of those access approvals and all they are not uh, auto provided by the system so these types of things and then uh, also making sure that we review it on a periodic basis the events and logs uh, because um, they could be a flow of traffic to a particular uh, thing which may give an indication that this is a uh, place probably they could they could be a misconfiguration or some person or some asset would have been taken out of the cloud service provide, uh, provider so those things also we need to monitor uh, what should be the key things to be checked uh, for application uh, program interface integration with the third party see very very important element which we need to check from an uh, api integration is um, um, first of all uh, the connective the uh, the elements of network connections and the sim connection which is um, sim is properly there and then in and vpn integration also is another important element which needs to be uh, checked what is the enterprise responsibility related to dependent dep dependency on third party cloud service 
providers such as AWS and what is internal auditors' roles and uh, responsibilities. Um, so enterprise responsibilities related to dependency on third party uh, um, uh, is to actually understand the environment and and prepare that proper information and checklist which is where we are going to use those services so they need to identify clearly that what is the purpose of why they are going to the cloud service provider and if they are depending on the storage or if they are depending on those types of things and also because controls and all would be uh, implemented or they would be available with the cloud service provider and they will be responsible for monitoring it also our data may be stored at that uh, cloud service providers we would be dependent on them for the information and for the things and the availability of those infrastructure or those data uh, bases or those uh, platforms for the purpose of running our application and uh, getting information so uh, identifying those uh, things and then having a clear arrangement uh, identifying and preparing for having an backup also with us making sure that if there are certain compliance requirement those we communicate and we make sure that the third party service provider implements it looking at those reviews and logs is another important thing which through which we can actually manage the risk of being dependent on them an internal auditor primarily needs to uh, have a very clear understanding of um, various and things which are on the cloud and they need to understand that if it is in our control that means see the putting of the controls with respect to access with respect to developing and migrating the chain uh, configuring the uh, network uh, making sure that encryption and firewalls and all are properly implemented reviewing of incident all is the responsibility of the so of the company enterprise which is putting it on the cloud so auditor needs to look at those types of things and what type of monitoring is happening on those and and in case uh, there are certain configurations which they are saying the configuration controls which are with the third party service provider then auditor should look at the soc 2 or the third party report for those and uh, make sure that they are actually effective those controls are actually effective and in that case if anything is written as user control consideration that auditor should test within the organization itself are there any other questions Okay, so with this, uh, I would like to thank everyone for patient hearing. So what do you use, yeah. uh, Nikhilji? Yes, thank you, Yukti ma'am, for your very excellent presentation on the IT risk management and cloud security audit. Ma'am, you have very well touched upon various concepts such as IT risk management, various risk areas, risk and risk management strategies, characteristics of cloud computing, overview of cloud computing, cloud service models, cyber risk in cloud computing, control governance considerations, cloud governance model, common IT controls, and cloud service models and various things and we also solved our uh, various queries ma'am ma i know this was a maritime session and you covered it very well thank you very much ma'am for your valuable time and your uh, knowledge sharing thank you ma'am thank you very much thank you everyone thank you